Assalamualaikum and good morning. In this video, I will describe to you about gases exchange and its control. So, in mammals, we have respiratory organ which is known as lungs. The lungs is located in our thoracic cavity. The thoracic cavity is separated from the abdomen by the presence of diaphragm. So, each individual have a pair of lungs. Our right lungs consists of three lobes and our left lung consists of two lobes. During respiration, when we breathe, the air passes through the nostrils, our nasal cavity, and then it goes to the pharynx, and then it moves on to the larynx, which is where our vocal cord is located, and then it goes on to the trachea, which and then they are branched to form bronchi, left bronchi, and right bronchi. And then it will further divide it into the smaller branch, which is known as bronchioles. And then it moves on to the smaller and tinier branches, which is known as alveoli. So basically, in mammals, we have about 500 million of alveoli. The surface of the alveoli is covered by abundance of blood capillaries, which facilitate the diffusion of the oxygen gases. The gas diffusion occurs between the thin layer of the small blood capillaries and the thin layer of the alveoli. This is known as respiratory surface. To facilitate the diffusion of the respiratory gases, so the respiratory surface must have several adaptations, in which the blood capillary consists of only a single layer of simple squamous epithelium, and also in the alveoli surface, this is also consists of single layer of simple squamous epithelium, which is very thin. The diagram shows here is the respiratory surface between the alveolus and the blood capillaries. Okay, so this is the single layer of simple squamous epithelial tissues covering the alveoli. And the blood capillary is also lined by a single layer of simple squamous epithelium. So here you can see that the membrane is very thin. So here we can see the thin fluid which is covering the alveoli which cause the respiratory surface to be moist which facilitates the diffusion of the gases that is oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oxygen will diffuse into the red blood cells and binds with the hemoglobin and the carbon dioxide will be diffused into the alveoli and exhaled as carbon dioxide plus water vapor. In our blood capillaries, they consist of many red blood cells which we know as erythrocytes. In red blood cells, there are abundance of hemoglobin Hemoglobin is the respiratory pigment in most vertebrates. Apart from hemoglobin, we also have myoglobin. But in this case, I will only describe about hemoglobin first. So the hemoglobin is a type of protein that consists of four polypeptide chains. There are two alpha chains and two beta chains. Since it has more than one polypeptide chain, it is called as quaternary protein. Hemoglobin consists of a protein part, which is known as the globin, and the non-protein component. That's why it is called as conjugated protein. So the non-protein compound is known as the heme group, and the protein part is known as globin. Each polypeptide chain has one heme group. So altogether, there are four polypeptide chains, so we have four heme groups. At the center of the heme group, the iron atom is located. One iron atom can bind to one oxygen molecule. So one hemoglobin can bind to four oxygen molecules. Our respiratory pigments have several characteristics. So basically, there are four main characteristics of hemoglobin. The first characteristic of hemoglobin is that it has high affinity towards oxygen. It means hemoglobin can bind to oxygen even though the partial pressure of oxygen is low. 
So it is a very crucial benefit for us because like for example, when you go to the hiking to a mountain, we know that the atmospheric pressure will be lower and then the partial pressure of oxygen will be low. But then our hemoglobin can still bind towards oxygen which can allow the cell to get the oxygen supply that it needs. No! When the partial pressure of oxygen is high, usually in alveolus, hemoglobin will bind to the oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. The second characteristic is that hemoglobin can release oxygen when partial pressure of oxygen drops. When the partial pressure of oxygen drops, that is in the tissue because the tissue keeps using the oxygen, oxyhemoglobin can release oxygen and dissociates to form hemoglobin and releases the oxygen to the tissues. This is also a very important characteristic because if the hemoglobin can only have high affinity to bind towards the oxygen but at the same time it is not able to release the oxygen therefore how will our cells get the oxygen that it needs? So when the partial pressure of oxygen drops which is usually occurs in our tissue because our tissue do cellular respiration so it uses the oxygen it causes the partial pressure of oxygen to fall in the tissue so when the partial pressure of oxygen falls in the tissue the hemoglobin it will release the oxygen to the tissue which needs that oxygen the third characteristic is that it can bind and release the oxygen reversibly. It means it can bind to the oxygen and also it can release the oxygen whenever partial pressure of oxygen drops. And number four, it can bind and releases oxygen by cooperative binding. What does it mean? When one ion atom in the heme group binds to the oxygen, it causes the conformational changes to the other subunits so when one subunit or one polypeptide chain binds to the oxygen, the second, third and fourth subunit will bind to the oxygen more easily. This will allow the hemoglobin to be saturated with oxygen very fast. So when this hemoglobin goes to the tissue, so what happened is, so when one polypeptide chain releases the oxygen, it alters the conformation or the shape of the other polypeptide chains so they have less affinity towards that oxygen and releases oxygen quickly to the tissue. So there is four characteristics of hemoglobin. Apart from being able to bind with the oxygen, hemoglobin can also bind to the carbon dioxide but it does not bind at the same site as the oxygen. Therefore, it will not compete to bind with carbon dioxide. There are three ways how the carbon dioxide can be removed from our body in our respiratory system. Number one is to transport the carbon dioxide by dissolving it in the plasma. Some carbon dioxide from the tissue diffuse into the plasma and it combines with the water to form carbonic acid. But the process is very slow since there is no enzyme in the plasma that catalyzes this process. So it occurs very slowly. And this carbonic acid will dissociate into proton or hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. The second type of transport is as bicarbonate ions in the plasma. Second way of carbon dioxide transportation is that the carbon dioxide from the tissue diffuses into the red blood cells and what happens is the same process that occurs in the plasma. And what happens is the carbon dioxide combines with the water in the red blood cells to form carbonic acid but now the differences is that 
in red blood cell, it contains enzyme carbonic anhydrase. The presence of the enzyme speed up the reaction so that many carbon dioxide combines with this water. Carbonic acid dissociates to form proton and bicarbonate ions. The formation of the hydrogen carbonate ions that occurs very fast causing the bicarbonate ions to accumulate in the red blood cells. The membrane of the red blood cell is very permeable to negative ions. The bicarbonate ion will diffuse out of the red blood cell and moves into the plasma and causes the cell to become positively charged. What happened is the chloride ions in the plasma diffuse into the red blood cell to reduce the positive charges in the red blood cell. This is known as chloride shift. This way of transportation is the major way which is 60 to 70 percent. Since the partial pressure of oxygen is low in the tissue, oxyhemoglobin will dissociate into hemoglobin and oxygen molecules. Oxygen molecules will be released to the tissues and the hemoglobin will combine with the carbon dioxide to form carbaminohemoglobin. The third type of transportation is that it can combine to the hemoglobin to form carbaminohemoglobin. The higher concentration of carbonic acid in the red blood cell causes the accumulations of hydrogen ions in red blood cell. So what happened is this causes the pH in the red blood cells to reduce. So another function of hemoglobin is to join with the proton. So hemoglobin can also act as buffers. When it binds to the carbaminohemoglobin. So this is called as carbaminohemoglobinic acid. When the red blood cells is circulated to the lungs, so what happened is the reverse process occurs in which the bicarbonate ions in the plasma will diffuse back into the red blood cells and the carbaminohemoglobin will dissociate to form carbon dioxide and protons, hydrogen ions. And these hydrogen ions will join back with bicarbonate ions to form carbonic acid. And carbonic acid will dissociate to form carbon dioxide and water. And since the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is higher in the red blood cell. So this carbon dioxide will diffuse out to the plasma and finally is released into the alveolus. And this carbon dioxide will be taken out of our body during exhalation. And that's why when we exhale or breathe out, it releases carbon dioxide and water vapor. I hope you can describe the structure of hemoglobin and its characteristics as respiratory pigments and also describe the three ways of how carbon dioxide is transported from tissues to the lungs.